So I released a video recently about setting higher goals for yourself. And in that video, I cited that most people don't set their goals high enough. And in fact, I think I actually used, I used the phrase, if you have a goal and you know how to achieve that goal, you don't have a goal. You have a to-do list. And that's vastly different than the kind of goals that high-performing people set. High-performing people set goals that they have no idea how to achieve. That's the kind of goal I want you to have for yourself. You should set a goal, and you should look at that goal, and it should make you a little bit nervous, and you really shouldn't have a sense for how to achieve it. But the mere fact of setting the goal is going to start a sequence of events that will reveal the solution and the steps to getting to that goal. They won't all be laid out for you. They never will. But you'll find out what the first step is, and you'll act on that first step, and then you get to the second step, and so on. So that's what that video was about. And I got this, this beautiful question from Missy Loves Life over on TikTok. And uh, check out her channel. She's got some really cool stuff going on. So you're going to want to go check her out for sure. And she posed this question. Okay, but how do we set higher goals while minimizing stress? It's not healthy. And I will tell you, I agree. Stress is one of those things that is not healthy by any stretch. And I wouldn't want anyone to be stressed in an unhealthy way. But I will tell you that having a little bit of stress as you're working towards your goals it's probably a good thing because it's going to get you to take action. But let's talk about this and let's talk about setting high goals as they relate to stress and your ability to achieve those goals. And so I'm going to take some notes here, right here on this page, and you can follow along as I do it. But I think the key is going to be aligning your, your really high goals. I don't even know of a better word for that. Your highest goals, that's thats not the way you spell it. Your highest goals with the stuff, the things that inspire you the most. These are the things you value. Thanks for hanging out and bearing with my spelling mistakes. There's going to be a ton of them. Nothing I can do about it. I'm not the best speller. <laughs> So that's the key. That's what we're going to talk about in this video is aligning your highest goals with the things that inspire you the most. So why do we do this? So you might be asking yourself, okay, Chris, but why do I want to do this? Well, here's why. When you work from an inspired state, you elicit a response from a part of your brain that does not create stress. You elicit a response from a part of your brain that actually calms you down and has the ability to mute the other part of your brain that creates stress. And I don't want to get too neuroscientific here, but what I'm going to tell you is this. There are three major parts to your brain. Your basal ganglia, that's your most primitive part of your brain. Your limbic system, which is the mammalian part of your brain that's responsible for things like emotion and keeping your keeping your species alive. Every, every mammal has that. But then you are unique in that you have a neocortex. That's the most evolved part of your brain. What we know about the neocortex is that when you work on the things you value and the things you are inspired by, blood, Oxygen, nutrients, flow to your neocortex. Your neocortex doesn't know stress. It only knows inspiration. It only knows how to work on the things and get uh, energized by the things that inspire you and that you value. But your neocortex also has the ability to mute the impulses from your basal ganglia and your limbic system. That's where stress comes from. So if you can, by its nature, align your goals with what inspires you most, with what you value most, you immediately start working in an inspired state, and you immediately start energizing your neocortex. And when you energize the neocortex, your stress response goes down. So you work in a healthy, I can't say stress-free, but you work in a state that is 
where you mitigate the stress, which I think is a uh, minimize the stress, which is what you're asking. So why? Because you work from the neocortex. All right. So that's that's the first part. And that's what's most important. But how? How do we figure out what inspires us the most and what we value most? I'm going to take you through a very simple exercise right now that's going to help you figure that out. I didn't make up this exercise. I've had a couple of mentors teach this to me, and it is a very powerful exercise. It's called the STEM exercise. So the STEM exercise goes like this. The S stands for space. How do you fill your space? And you can do this along with me while I'm describing this to you. Get out a piece of paper. And write down everything that you observe in your space. Look around you. What do you surround yourself with? We are always going to surround ourselves with the things that inspire us and the things that we value. I am a minimalist by definition. I don't have a lot of things, but the things that I do have around me inspire me. So, Look around your space and start to make a list. What are the things that start to jump out at you that inspire you? And then make that list. That's going to help you. That's your first step in figuring out the things that you value and the things that inspire you. The next step is T. That stands for time. How do you spend your time? And I should probably put a question mark here to be grammatically correct. I think that's important on rare occasion. How do you spend your time? When given the choice between two activities, we will always do what we value most. We will always do what inspires us most. When you have the freedom of choice, what are you going to spend your time on? So now I can start to reveal to you the things that inspire me and the things that I value the most. And there are three of them. The first is my business. The second is my children. And the third is my fitness. Optimizing my physical fitness. When given the choice between two activities, I'm always going to choose one of those three. So I don't really like to socialize. I would rather work on my business. And I don't really like to uh, clean the house. I'd rather spend time goofing around with the kids. And every single morning when I wake up, the very first thing I do is I go out and I run. I run six miles. That Like minutes after waking up, that's what I do. Because these are the things that I value the most, and these are the things that inspire me. Now, they might not be for you, and that's totally fine. You have things that inspire you. What do you spend your time doing? The next is E. How do you spend your energy? Where do you place your energy? This is your mental energy. This is your spiritual energy. This is your physical energy, your intellectual energy, your social energy, your, 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 well, money is the last one. Money's the M. I was going to say your financial energy, but that's really M. So we'll get to that in a minute. If you have energy to spend, where does it go? What activities do you participate in? What do you think about? What do you learn about? What podcasts do you listen to? What do you watch on, if you still watch TV, what do you watch on TV? I think if you're in my program here, you probably don't watch a lot of TV. It's one of the first things that I advise. So how do you spend your energy? Write those things down. And then finally, the M, where do you spend your money? Where do you spend money? So I spend money on three things. I spend money on my business. I spend money on my children. And I buy I buy my running shoes. About every eight weeks, I have to buy a new pair of running shoes. That's where I spend my money. Where you decide to spend your money is going to reveal what inspires you the most and what you value the most. So once you do the STEM exercise, you should have four lists. I want you to look at those lists and what starts to jump off the page at you. What common thread do you see flowing through each of those lists? That common thread is going to be revelatory to you in what inspires you the most. Now, align your highest goals with the things that inspire you the most. Then, align your highest goals with what inspires you the most.
find that from the lists above. Okay, so we just did the STEM exercise. You looked through your answers. You found that common thread. Align your goals with what's on, with, with that common thread, with that thing that jumped off the page at you. That sort of alignment is going to make sure that when you're working on your goals, you're working where? You're working from the neocortex. Okay? It's going to ensure that you're working from the neocortex. When you work from the neocortex, it has the ability to mute the impulses from the other parts of your brain. You will not notice time going by. You won't feel the need to snack. Distractions won't occur. All of these things mean that you're working in an inspired state, and that's what I want for you. So when you align the highest goals with what inspires you the most, you start to work in a in a almost stress free environment, it's impossible to be totally stress free. Totally stress free. Easy for me to say, because the other two parts of your brain are always going to be there. And by the way, your basal ganglia in your limbic system have a tremendous power over your brain. They are always working to get your neocortex to not work, so that the basal ganglia keeps you alive. The neo, the uh, limbic system keeps your tribe alive. That's that's what they're for. So they have to work really hard to make sure that happens, where your neocortex is just kind of chilling out. So the neocortex doesn't fire as quickly as the other two. So you're never going to be stress-free. But when you can work in that inspired state, you are minimizing stress in the healthiest way possible because you are working towards that inspired goal. And so what happens if you can't align your highest goals with what inspires you most and what you value most? What happens if you can't do that? Well, the first step is going to be to find a way to link the two. And you find some sort of connection between achieving that goal and finding fulfillment, confidence, balance, happiness in your most inspired activities. Find some sort of link between. When you find that link, then you bond the goal to the, ins the inspiration and to the values. If they're not, if it's not direct, you can do that. Now, what if you can't find that link? Then, my friends, you've got to take some time and you've got to do some honest self-reflection because at that point, your goals are not aligned with what inspires you and they can't be connected to what inspires you. You've got to really ask yourself why you've set those goals in the first place because those goals might not be the right goals for you. That's where the unhealthy stress comes in. One of the ways that you can tell if a goal is inspired or not is if you intrinsically will work towards that goal. What does that mean? That means you don't need a to-do list. You don't need reminders. You don't need motivation because discipline and inspiration work hand in hand, and you always gravitate towards the state of working towards those goals. So no to-do lists, no reminders, no motivation. It just naturally happens. I never need a reminder or a to-do list to do my job, to work for my clients. And by the way, if any of this is resonating with you and you'd like to explore what it, what it looks like to work in a mastermind with other people who all are working towards their inspired goals, I would encourage you to check out the link that I'm going to put on the screen in the recording that will allow you to check out my collaborative mastermind called Force Acceleration. It is designed to do three things. It is designed to help you get more profit in your business. It's designed to help you have more impact on those you serve. And it's designed to help you have fun at the same time. And we all are working towards that. You get together with a bunch of really cool people, like the people here who are here right now watching this thing live. You get together with those people every single week, and we all work towards those goals. So I hope you'll go to collab.proudy.me which is the link on the screen, to check out that mastermind. And I would love to see you in there. All right, so wrapping this up, work towards that inspired state. You don't need the to-do list. You don't need the reminder or the motivation. And align your highest goals with those highest inspirations, and you'll find those goals just magically start to manifest in front of you. And if you need the reminder or the to-do list or the motivation, engage in some honest self-reflection and see why you set those goals in the first place, because maybe those aren't the perfect goals for you and spend some time finding the ones that are.